today on Makers Muse, I'm going to share with you my experiences with downloading and printing a 3D file from Gambody.com. Let's get started. Welcome back to Makers Muse, guys. So, Gambody got in touch with me at the end of 2016 and asked if I was interested in downloading a file from their website and printing it out and sharing my experiences. So, basically, Gambody is an online 3D file marketplace and you can pay money to download STL files that are guaranteed printable, which you can then print on your home 3D printer, which is a cool idea. And to be honest, I had been eyeing a model on there for quite some time, which is the T60 Power Armor model that they've got up in here from Fallout. So I'm a massive Fallout fan, as a lot of you would know, and I thought it looked pretty cool, and I'd like to try print it out. So when they got in touch, I thought, yeah, okay, cool. I'd like to try this model. They sent me a code and let me download it for free. So this is the model in question, the T60 Power Armor 3D model static figure. And here's this sort of intro slide on there and it sort of shows these, um, these very pretty renders of how it should look, that sort of thing. And it shows sort of how it looks assembled. Now this is a 3D print, which is pretty cool. I have actually printed it. So they're sort of showing you, you can print it. Lots of support material there, which I'll go into later. But uh, it does actually have pictures of a 3D print which made me think it should be worthwhile giving a shot. A lot of the files on here do not have actual print pictures, they only have renders. I'll go into that in a little while, but this did have a print picture, so I thought I'd give it a try. So as a lot of you guys would know, I love MeshMixer as a way to analyze and inspect STL files, and of course, as soon as I got it, I downloaded it and chucked it into here. So first impressions, it's a very high polygon model. I press W here. You can actually zoom in and see it's got a lot of triangles, which means it's going to print nice and rounded. It's going to have a lot of detail, which uh, is something you're not going to get out of a model pulled directly from the game. So what I have shown in the past is pulling models from games. So this is a, a program called NIFScope. It's awesome. I'll link in the description and here on how to do this, but you can pull models directly from video games for your own personal use. You obviously can't sell them because this is their own IP. I'm not sure what arrangement Gambody has for selling their models, but what I wanted to see is the difference between a pulled model and the what model that I downloaded. Now it's worth noting that if I had paid for this model from Gambody, it's around $30 US, which is quite a lot of money for a, I guess, digital file. So this is a power armor model pulled directly from Fallout 4. I did have to align them to each other. They were different different points in space in, re in regards to the origin. And here, if I uh, transform them and pull them over the top of each other, they're pretty close, which is interesting as well. So looking further into it, if I hit W, it'll show the wireframe for both models. As you can obviously see, the pulled file from the game is very low polygon count, which you will see as facets on your model. And also it's got lots of errors which means it would have a very lot of difficulty printing. But the one that's from Gambody does have high polygon. However, there is some details I did notice that look quite similar. So I'll go around the back here. And the main two details that I noticed similar are the sort of lake areas. So this is the one from Gambody. And this very much looks like a game mesh that's been what's called remeshed or subdivided to add more triangles. So although... It looks high detail, it still has those facets which are very clearly uh, on this model which is kind of interesting. So I do suspect that this model has used a, a reference from a game to be model, but there's details added in here if I go to the uh, helmet for example. This is the, the GAM body one, it's got a little light here, the tubes are high detail, that sort of thing, whereas this one from the game doesn't have those details. So there has been a lot of work that's gone into this model. But I do think that a 3D reference was used from the game and possibly some of the mesh was transferred over. So the next thing I wanted to test is if the file that was provided was good for 3D printing. So this, uh, this pack has three models. It's got the actual gantry thing and then it's got the, the actual figure and then it has another little part with chains on it. So each are separate STLs. But with STL files, you can have what's called shells in them, which means you can have lots of different sort of inter interclosed uh, enclosed spaces which are separate from the others, even though it may be a single STL. And MeshMix is fantastic at discovering these by hitting separate shells. So the first time I did this, I was a little bit surprised at how long it was taking. And as you can see here, there is a lot of shells in this model. Uh, 
every main component is a separate shell, which is very typical of organic 3D modeling for those who model for games or animation, that sort of thing. You don't need to combine or stitch models into a single manifold mesh. They don't care. So this is very typical from that kind of modeling, uh, that school of thought, I suppose. But for 3D printing, this is really quite uh, bad practice, I will say. And it's interesting because we can actually dis disassemble the model and see how it's been made. So, you know, if we click the, the helmet here, we can see that they had an overall mesh here, then added these details in like that. You can see the arms here. If I delete that, they've got these, uh, these cylinders that they've added in to make sure everything's held in place. Uh, you can go down and I can get rid of this leg, which is all one piece, which does tie into my theory of it being converted from an original game mesh. But you can see they have added various details such as these fasteners and that sort of thing. So I did reach out to Gambody and ask if this was typical of their models. And it's actually pretty funny because if you do this on the gantry or boom platform model, you can actually separate the shells and actually get rid of their, their branding um, on the, uh, the actual model itself. So that's not the best practice. And they did write back to me saying that they're undergoing the process of repairing all of their models on the website to be stitched together. And they said that update this model. But I do want to stress that they only did it after I complained, I suppose. So keep it in mind, not all models may be repaired like, uh, like they did for me after, me after I mentioned that there was multiple shells. They did say in terms of printing, it's not a problem. And true, you can do various tricks to separate the shells within Simplify 3D or Cura and print. But it is terrible practice to try to print files with intersecting shells like this. So true to their word, they did update the files and it says now uh, brackets repaired, which means that they'll probably run it through the NetFab or the 3D Builder engine to fix it. So now if I fire up the repaired T60 model, it looks the same, which is fantastic. And if I do separate shells, hold on, why is there multiple shells? <laughs> so it looks to me that it was repaired and not checked, to be honest. So if I'm looking at the model here and I click it, that's the main model, which is fine. But if I delete it, you can see there's still these other objects here, which is telling me that they're not actually even connected to the mesh. If you zoom in here, yep, you can see these parts are actually just hovering. They're not actually touching each other. So what chance do you have of those details actually adhering to your 3D print? I'm not too sure. Anyway, I did proceed to print the models and let me take you into Simplify 3D to show you how they stack up in terms of printability. So this is the updated T60 Power Armor model, which has been repaired uh, by Gambody for 3D printing after I mentioned there was multiple shells in their models. And the first thing you'll notice if you've printed anything before on FDM is there's zero chance this will print without supports. Basically, underside uh, details like these hands, the, the overhangs here, tubes, that part there on the back of the valve, all of that is going to fail horribly unless we have supports, which means in this instance, it's actually better practice to slice up parts when you're in the design phase for 3D printability. And if you're downloading a file that says 100% guaranteed printable, I wouldn't be too impressed downloading a file that's all in one piece like this because the amount of support material you're going to need is astronomical. And to show you that, I'm going to go into tools and customize support structures. And I'm going to turn it down to 1% pillar resolution so it doesn't miss anything. And I'm going to make it 60 degree, so 30 degree overhangs off 90. And you can see just the sheer amount of support material that it needs. And it hasn't even caught all of the details. Underside sharp curves are notorious for being missed with automatic support generation. So you can see here the thumb's been missed. And, you know, some of the fingers have been. So you're going to have to go in and actually in include manual support to make this print properly. For example, I'm going to have to add in support structures here under the thumbs. And here and here and here. Stuff like that. So a lot of preparation and work is going to go into actually printing it. And this is what I mean. You can see the amount of support needed to hold details up in place. The, it's just ridiculous. Um, and really, no matter how carefully I print this, I am going to lose details by breaking them off. So unless you have a soluble support matrix uh, or even a better technology like a polyjet, you're not going to get the detail that you see in the model uh, file itself just because of the sheer amount of support material this model actually needs. So I threw it on the printer. It, it did take pretty much all day to print starting uh, start to finish. The hour estimate 
was pretty close to 10 hours once it was finished at 0.2 millimeter layer height, so not even that accurate. And it was just chock full of support and I had to go at it with pliers to pull it away, which did mean, mean I lost some detail. And the model is okay, but does not at all look like the actual model that I uh, downloaded just because of the differences in terms of print quality versus the actual detail of the mesh. Now the part with the chain actually came out a lot better than I expected. It was printed like that with again lots of support but there's again you've got the layer orientation to keep in mind so like you know the little hook is just busted as soon as I used it. The hooks don't fit through the holes in the, the armor just because of accuracy uh, issues and stuff like support material in there there's no way that's going to ever get removed. But you don't really see that so that's not too bad and the chain did print to be fair. Uh, it's not the best detail, but the chain did actually work. But again, if your printer has any sort of uh, inaccuracies, you know, this is the Prusa Mark II, it's a good machine, then you're really going to struggle printing that detail and definitely printing the figurine. And the last part was the boom platform, and this is my major criticism with this model. It was not at all sliced for 3D printing in terms of breaking it up to, into easy to manage chunks. What could have easily been done by the modeler is they could have actually designed these parts down here to be separate, which means you could have printed it without having to have a massive amount of support material down the bottom here. And I mean masses of support material. Just look at the amount of support that you need to hold it all up in place just because of those small details. And this added hours to the print. It actually was going for probably 15 hours or more. It says 20 here, but mine was Actually, yeah, mine was probably like 20 hours, to be honest. But to be fair, the detail on the boom was the best out of all the other prints, probably because of the size and the simple nature of the geometry. There is areas where I couldn't get support material out just because, again, that shouldn't have been there. It should have been sliced to be separate and assembled afterwards. But the detail is actually pretty good. And the model overall does look quite nice. Uh, putting it together, it looks pretty funky. As a Fallout 4 fan, I'm happy with it. But it's a long way to go into actually making this file easily 3D printable. And that's probably my biggest complaint on the models here on Gambody. So looking at a few other examples, they have details like this anime girl with the hair, uh, this dragon with the teeth and the wings, this one which is Hercules, which is it's a fantastic looking model. It's a very high detail mesh and definitely worth some money. But in terms of actually printing it, you will struggle with stuff like the teeth, although, to be completely fair, these newer models appear to be separated for 3D printing. So this has actually got pegs. I don't know if they've been given enough tolerances to, to actually print well, but, you know, the mouths of the dragons will still really struggle with FDM printing. And again, my biggest complaint is there's no example of this model being printed. I think the guys at Ganbody actually need to print every model before they list it, because as a user intending to 3D print models, you're not going to spend 30 bucks US on something which doesn't, you know, the company hasn't even bothered to print before they put it up for sale. And to take that to the extreme, I have to mention this model, which was in the news last year. All the 3D printing websites picked it up, which is awesome for Gambody, but it's basically this humongously detailed Millennium Falcon model. And it is, it is sliced into sections. Uh, it, does, it does have all these internal components, but I don't believe it's ever been printed. Unless I can be proven wrong, um, all I can see in these news things is like this render, which is really misleading. That's a render on a table, not an actual 3D print. And in terms of spending $75 US on a digital file, you kind of want to know if it is printable. So that's something that you should keep in mind if you're looking at buying pretty much any digital file online. Is it actually printable? Has it been tested? Is there photographs of the model that have been printed? And if there is, do they look spotless? Do they look too good to be true? Maybe they've been printed on a soluble support system where your printer can only take uh, one extruded material and it has to have breakaway support. In that case, you're gonna be spending, I probably spent about two hours breaking support material off this model and I didn't really try that hard to get into all the nook and crannies. These other models, you know, you're probably gonna be spending a lot of time finishing them and getting the support material away. And also keep in mind that the multiple shell issue was only resolved after I did raise it with Gambody. If I hadn't, uh, if I was just a general user downloading the files, it did have roughly 200 shells in that T60 power armor model, which you do need to do tricks with to make them print properly. And it's really not good 3D modeling for 3D printing practice. So that's gonna do it guys for my video and review on the Gambody T60 power armor model and my overall thought 
on the online marketplace and also on downloading 3D files for 3D printing in general, you have to very much keep in mind that sometimes you'll download things that might look pretty, but in real, real life may actually not be all that 3D printable, especially depending on what system you have. If you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse, guys, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews. I love bringing you this content and I'd love to have you on board. My name's Angus and thanks for watching this 3D printing video here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.